know what's poppin'. GE Gang, your boy Foos Nigga. Back with another video. Hey, I'm gonna show major love to everybody that's been showing me major love. You know what I'm saying? Foos coming back. You feel me? I, I, I appreciate y'all. Appreciate, appreciate y'all. <laughs> I appreciate all the DMs I'm getting. Uh, I appreciate all the comments I'm getting. I, I, I appreciate all the love. You feel me? From all different angles. You feel me? It's much appreciated. I only abandoned the channel just a little bit just because YouTube was fucking copyrighting everything I did. So it was like, what is, what's really the fucking point? I'm getting copyrighted left and fucking right. I get an email, you've been copyrighted, copyrighted. I'm like, God damn, bro. So I went over to my other channel, you feel me? And, you know, I got traction there. So if you want to go, uh, you know, subscribe to the other channel, it's World of Foosh. World of Foosh. And uh, you guys can go do that, you feel me? But, uh, man, I want to give a shout out. Hold on, let me get this right, bro. Hold on. I'm going to fuck this shit up. I'm going to give a shout out to 21 Gun. 21 Gun. He told me I need to tap in with Trap Lil Ross. You feel me? Uh, channel wanted to give me a little deeper understanding into the, you know, the gang culture type shit that's going on in, in London, man. And I ain't going to lie. Y'all boys in London different when it comes to that gang shit. Like, y'all know that rap, that, that Master P song, Bout It, Bout It? Like, y'all motherfuckers really bout it, bout it. You feel me? Like, I feel like a lot of motherfuckers in America say they bout it, but then... Run when it's time to battle, tie you hide behind some shit. I feel like motherfuckers in London, they don't give a fuck. Like as you can see in the last video, them motherfuckers doing everything on CCTV in broad daylight. They don't give a damn. You feel me? So y'all really bout about it over there. You feel me? And I can respect motherfuckers standing on business. You standing on business. I can respect that. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Not that I'm saying I uh, encourage or like all the violence, but if you're gonna do some shit, stand on it. You feel me? Don't be a coward and go hide behind some fucking bullshit. Or hide behind a keyboard or computer type shit and talk your shit. You feel me? I don't respect none of that. You know what I'm saying? So, um, try the 21 gun. We're going to uh, tap into this trap. La Ross video. Um, the, the, the OFB and, and N9 got them uh, bloody gang where they got going on. Man, I'm, I'm learning some. I'm going deep into the fucking shit. I thought I knew some shit about my shit. But now, I'm, I'm I, it's fun learning about another fucking, uh, Another country's culture, and you know what I mean when it comes to that gang shit and how y'all really get down. You feel me? So, uh, that's what we're gonna tap into, man. I got my snacks, cause boy, you sent me a video, bro, and it's like an hour long. You feel me? I got my snacks, my you know what I'm saying, my oranges. You feel me? And, and my water. But let me know, man, on this reaction shit. Do you guys like the little the fucking twenty minute videos, thirty minute videos, hour, hour plus? Let me know. You feel me? Me personally, I like the longer videos because it's like it's like TV to me. So when I see some little 10 to 15 minutes shit, I'll be wanting that shit. I don't be wanting it to end. You feel me? But whatever you guys want, tap in in the comments uh, below. And, and, you know, man, we're going to run it that way. Um, but make sure you follow the uh, the social medias down here. You feel me? And if you want me to react to a video, send it to my DM. And we're going to get down. You feel me? So let's go ahead and tap into the, tap into the video, man. See what this track with Ross is talking about, man. This video is sponsored by Privacy. Can I put my hand I'm here in the Oval, but I'm not Can talking about that? O-Block in Chicago. I'm talking about the Royal Water Farm Estate in Tottenham, North London, home of the famous drill crew OFB, who over the past few years have been involved in a bloody feud with another group of rappers from a nearby area. With the details about the tit-for-tat back and forth going on between this group, playing out in UK drill songs, with fans, feds and internet neeks like myself desperately pouring over the lyrics, you know, trying to discover that what UK is really shit, going on you in better the know streets. What come with that shit, Thankfully, that some of the biggest rappers from these areas have been able to get rap. out through music, bagging number one records and albums, and they along with putting bangers, millions of like pounds said, in their savings accounts. Song. But number, for others, one being real in the music like, and being real in the streets people. is one and the same. With some promising young rappers from this area sat in jail today, facing multi-decade sentences for mm. crimes they had done in the streets. But that's the reality of life at the bottom in North London. Shootings, stabbings, and disappearances, many of which leave the police baffled as to who is really responsible. Shoot. All the while, drill rappers drop banger songs with numerous hints that seem to suggest what is really going on And they tell them on themselves, though. That's so how about today, it about they are. They tell I'm going to break down to you guys the this. true and shocking no, story of UK drill in North London. Police were called here to the Broadwater Farm Estate just before 1am this morning to reports of gunfire. When they got here, they discovered three individuals who had been shot at. They include a 19-year-old man and two boys, 15 years of age. First contact. Oh, yes, I think there's been a shooting at Woodgreen. Um, sorry, there's been what, sorry? Um, I heard some gunshots fired, somebody on a moose bike. Hello, Miss Police. Someone has been shot dead at Hollywood Green Cinema in Wood Green. Someone has been shot and the guy's not moving. I've got stabbed. Where are you, mate? Jet Mary's called. Jet Mary. I'm dead. 
where young people feel scared to go to Wood Green and Wood Green young people feel scared to come to Tottenham. That should not happen in London. That's Just crazy, imagine bro. the perfect small business that you could start. What would that look like? You'd be able to. Bro, that's so crazy. And like I said, bro, there are fucking ghettos. There are fucking gangs everywhere. I don't give a fuck where you go. Every country, every city you go to, every state, you're going to have your section, you know what I'm saying, some shit, a place you don't want to go to. You feel me? Like, it's everywhere. You can't get away from it, so it's not like, you know what I'm saying, you got your little spots you can go take a vacation at, but some, even when you go there, there's a certain area that you can't go to as a tourist. You feel me? Like, and the crazy thing, I used to live in, uh, in, um, in Germany for two years. I lived in uh, Mannheim. Not too far away from Frankfurt, you feel me? So, and I ain't gonna lie, from what I saw, because we lived on base, but we always caught that motherfucking train downtown, and that was some of the funnest times of my life as a kid ever. Coming from L.A., from seeing a certain culture to going out to fucking uh, Germany, seeing the difference, we go to the goddamn, the pools, and we see naked women, like, at 14 and 15, nigga, like, we seeing grown-ass women. You didn't see women naked at the pool in, in, in California, and or over here in the States. It don't happen. But I'm going down there seeing, you 15 years old, bro, going to the goddamn pool on, on the, uh, on the goddamn, uh, the school, goddamn, what do they call those fucking things where you go to, uh, the school, I'm about to say vacation, field trip, field trip, we go to the goddamn big ass pool area, and the, I'm a grown ass woman, pulling her fucking drawers down, putting on some other shit, boy, that's when I knew I liked Germany. You know what I'm saying? Some of the funnest times, bro. But I know it was a real side. I just never fucking saw it. You feel me? OFB stands for Original Farm Boys. The farm is a uh, reference to the notorious Broadwater boy. Farm Estate, which is based in the N17 Postal Code. In the 80s, this was and one of London's most dangerous estates. And for decades now, gangs have been a well-documented like part of life on this and estate. estate. This includes the Tottenham Mandem, an infamous crew of Tottenham-based Gs who were being extensively investigated by London's Met Police for decades, specifically Operation Trident, the Met Police's specialised unit aiming to tackle gun crime in the black community. But some people might argue that while trying to tackle gun crime in the community, the Met Police maybe committed a few gun crimes of their own. As Tottenham resident and alleged member of the Tottenham Mandem, Mark Duggan, was named by this unit as one of Europe's most dangerous criminals. A few years after the police shot dead an unarmed Mark Duggan in 2011, after receiving intelligence that he was in possession of a weapon. The funeral of a black man shot by the police might imply many things. The police insist Mark Duggan was armed and a direct threat before they shot him in the chest. His family say he was killed in cold blood. Mark Duggan's murder by the police was followed by days of community. Oh. So that's the same shit that's... So y'all really go through the same shit that we go through over here. You know what I'm saying? Of, of police officers shooting unarmed black men. Like George Floyd being choked to death by a fucking police officer. You feel me? With no goddamn... No, no gun, no threat, no nothing. So y'all really be going through the same shit, man. So... Man, anybody oblivious to this type of shit, man, that don't think this shit go around across the world, boy, you sadly fucking mistaken. You need to get out and live life a little bit. You feel me? Unity unrest slash intense rioting as the police refused to accept what they'd done to the community, even they sending out a leaky copper to read a pre-written statement to explain why the killing was supposedly okay, while surrounded by angry members of the public screaming that they're a bunch of murderers. No officer steps out at the start of the day to run an operation that results in someone Anywho, setting aside the tragic case of Mark Duggan, as the years went by, many different street crews would emerge and lay claim to the territory in Broadwater Farm and the surrounding Tottenham areas. With several crews like Bloodline and Star Gang emerging who would use the colour red to identify themselves, shaping themselves around the American Blood Gang, despite having no official affiliation with them. And this is something that rappers from this area continue to do to this day, with Band OK's recent summer smash slide being notable for its extensive use of the Blood's red paisley. Anywho, in the late noughties and early 
2010s, some of the people that had been involved with gangs on these estates started to form their own musical movements. Initially, there was the North Star music group in the noughties, and then the next generation of Tottenham-based rappers represented under the Star Gang. And this is where infamous drill rappers Heady One and RV come into the picture. Repping Star Gang heavy in their early work, which is why you'll see their starish brand. I ain't gonna lie, bro. Shout out to uh, Trap La Ross. You feel me? Like, he really going in, like, really explaining, you know what I'm saying, where this shit is coming from. You feel me? Like, I can appreciate that a whole lot. You feel me? Like, it gives me, like, somebody that lives over here in the fucking States, a real retrospect of, of what goes on down there. Instead of, like, doing, like, a 10-minute video, just pieces of shit together, he's really breaking this shit down. So, shout out to him, for sure. And shout out to him for this video. Branding on a lot of their early projects and mixtape cover-ups. But this was before UK Drill was even a thing. And back in the 2010s, Heady, RV, and the other OFB pioneers were doing what's called road rap, a subgenre of British gangster rap where UK rappers would rap over American beats, spitting facts about the gritty realities of well, life on the streets where they're from. The problem is, the booming UK beats, Drill sound crazy. that everyone around the world that can't get enough though. of hadn't it been invented then. So Heady One wouldn't truly flourish as a rapper for many sense. years because his time doing road rap with the Star Gang would be cut short when he was caught in 2014 with over £30,000 of smack and crack. This left Heady One hold being up, sentenced up, to a 30-month sit in jail, say? but while he was away, another broad hold tense, some of the people that had been involved with gangs on these estates started to form their own musical movements. Initially, there was the North Star music group in the noughties, and then the next generation of Tottenham-based rappers represented under the Star Gang. And this is where infamous drill rappers Heady One and RV I'm come into the picture. Far, Repping but... Star Gang heavy in their early work, which is why you'll see their starish brand branding on a lot of their early projects and mixtape cover-ups. But this was before UK Drill was even a thing. And back in the 2010s, Heady, RV, and the other OFB pioneers were doing what's called road rap, a subgenre of British gangster rap where UK rappers would rap over American beats, spitting facts about the gritty realities of life on the streets where they're from. Problem is, the booming UK Drill sound that everyone around the world can't get enough of hadn't been invented then. So Heady One wouldn't truly flourish as a rapper for many years because his time doing road rap with the Star Gang would be cut short when he was caught in 2014 with over £30,000 of smack and I knew I heard that This right. left Heady One I being sentenced 30, to a 30 30, month 30, sit in jail, but while he was away, another Broadwater Farm rap legend God, emerged. Damn. The deep voice driller that some people call the original Pop Smoke, Abra, Abracadabra, Abra. would pick up the mic and start rapping, releasing his hit song, Robbery. This track will get an all-star UK remix from British rap legends Crept and Conan, with that hey. remix sitting today at Crept, a healthy 26 guy. million views. With Abra evolving beyond the Star Gang moniker that had been popular on the Broadwater state before, forming the new musical crew Unto Nation. But this was 2016, on, and around this time... I ain't gonna lie, bro. I miss my nigga Cadet. You feel me? Like, bro. I was so... Hot. Like, he took a Uber. He was taking Uber somewhere and died in a fucking, like, a Uber, bro. Like, I miss my nigga. I just had to say that, bro. Cadet was one of my favorite artists out there, no cap time UK Drill was just beginning to find its signature sound, and things would go to the next level musically in 2017 when Heady One was released from jail. Reuniting with his day one homie RV, beginning to drop back-to-back -back drill bangers and freestyles under the collective name OFB, and the 2017 Tim Westwood OFB Crib Session freestyle set would introduce fans to a whole raft of rapping OFB members, many of whom would go on to drop classic songs of their own right. This includes people like Low Key and Kush, and waiting in the wings was a lineup of elite teenage drill rappers, just waiting for their Hell opportunity you, to jump on the mic too, and eventually the it, world would be introduced to the OFB Youngers. People like Boogie B, Band OK, who is actually Mark Duggan's son, Double L's, what? and SJ. I mean, I swear, I don't know how they keep finding rappers on this estate. It's like a Pokemon <laughs> Gold. I'm out here trying to catch them all. And as time went on, we would see more and more no OFB lie. rappers introduced to the hey, we did it all, Is Pop, man. Desi, Trapo, Brad, d -Sat, Axe. I mean, I'm sorry if I've forgotten any of you, but there really is a lot of OFB rappers. Damn. And I know that some of the ops like to say OFB has too much rappers, but when they're all this talented, I say I'll keep them coming. But interestingly enough, OFB aren't the only tough guys around Tottenham, as historically I'm they've sure. been linked to another terrifying group in the area known as NPK hey. or the Northumberland Park. Hey, like they say, there is always somebody bigger and badder. I don't give a fuck you who you are. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I think I, I think I heard the best when Shannon Sharp said he said his grandma said, "There's always a bigger, badder mountain behind the mountain you're looking at." You feel me? You know, there's mountains. There's that motherfucking. Mount Rushmore motherfucking type mountain. Like, there's always going to be somebody bigger and better. So don't ever think you the one. There's somebody bigger and better than your ass. Believe it. There's somebody crazier than you. Believe that. You feel me? Like, know that. Don't, don't walk around the motherfucker like you that guy. 
us. You just know how to handle yourself. Why are you big bad fighting like Goliath? Why are you all your time at your job and miss out on your job and miss out on all the fun you know of life? life? It's because you. MPK are a crew hailing from Northumberland Park and around Park Lane. The area they're from seems the same Tottenham N17 postcode as OFB, with Northumberland Park train station only about 10 minutes away from Broadwater Farm on Ped. But another difference with MPK is that they rock purple bandanas purple, instead of red, okay. distinguishing them from the blood-inspired sets in nearby areas. But don't get the colour difference twisted. This group has a long heritage of association with the Red Bandana Tottenham crews. Formerly being considered a part of the Tottenham Mandem crew back in the day, eventually MPK branched off and started their own group. And just like Back and Not Nice, MPK really did live up to their name back in the day. It's been said that MPK based affiliates in the Tottenham area had something to do with the 2007 murder of Gary Guthrie outside of a nightclub, and they had a vicious early beef with Edmonton based group the Shank Stars. With the beef getting so out of hand, several members were put behind bars in the late noughties, but we're going to get into that feud in detail shortly. What's really important to know is that just like OFB, the younger generations of rappers that rep NPK would go on to release drill music, with the most notable crew emerging from this area rapping under the name Sin Squad, with their most high profile rappers being GP, aka Gunner Pumps, KK, LR, Bully B, Unks, Tugger, who is actually SJ's half brother, Stewie, M Loose, Sneaks, Shems, Trills, and OSAF. A lot of these guys were close to OFB rappers growing up, and as we'll see as the story goes on, they would end up riding together on more than just tracks. With a murder carried out by members of both OFB and MPK, Bro, leading to a bitter sp I can't get enough how to f of how he's explaining this shit. Like, he's explaining this shit so fucking well, and breaking it down so motherfucking well. Like, that's what I can't get. I'm like, I can follow along with his fucking shit, you feel me? Like, I like that. Man, shout out to 21 Gun for putting me on this mother. Split this between the former group of friends, rock, a feud which will get very ugly indeed. But before we move on to the next section, I also just want to say that there's another crew called AP from Enfield, aka Skengfield, with Ordnance Road being a prominent street in this area. And if you listen to music by rappers from Wood Green or Edmonton, you might hear them dissing this area in their music. And you might also hear about a group called TPL, which is Turnpike Lane, another separate crew who tend to have beef with OFB and do have some pretty good rappers as part of their lineup. But for the sake of simplicity, we're not really going to get into AP, TPL, or any other crews in this video, just so so it's easier to understand. Okay. Anywho, now you yeah, know about OFB me, and MPK, God, the red and shit. purple rocking crews from Tottenham, it's time to find out about their sworn enemies who we will be focusing on in this video. A couple of crews who come together under the colour green to wage war on anybody Ooh. from Tottenham. And now, a word from our sponsor. Sponsor by Pro R I V C. Protect your identity. Take the true card is amazing. Avoid a bad entity. Devious. Join up with a spend in robbing than drilling or rapping. With a 2002 Wood Green robbery crew getting hit with heavy sentences after a ruthless mugging campaign in the area, where the court was told members of the gang were willing to pull shanks for as little as one pound. And apparently this crack crew of armed robbers was so good at their jobs that it was reported that street crime in the area went down by a whopping 33% after their conviction. Now, the Wood Green mob didn't originally have a feud with groups from Tottenham until the end of the mid-noughties, where a series of tit-for-tat violent clashes saw Wood Green and Tottenham members hating each other. But again, we'll get into that as the story goes on. Ultimately, the young tough guys from Wood Green were pretty fearless and weren't afraid of having beef with anyone no matter where they're from. With the Wood Green mob ending up in violent Sorry, feuds boy, with crews fearless, all over London, you know including AP from Enfield, like, AP they from all Ballsy, Ninth in Street, like, and Hoxton no gangs in the N1 no postcode, just to name a few. Now, those feuds aren't super important to this story, but there is one big name that is going to be super relevant to what's going to go down in this video. And that name belongs to the infamous Wood Green Lance. gang member, Lamps, aka Dip that aka Dipper Dan, a supposedly feared member that put in a lot of work on the streets for the gang. Shoot. Story goes, Lamps was a wood green bully with ops in Tottenham and far beyond, apparently living in fear of him pulling up on their block. And hell, if this footage is Got anything like to go that. by, it looked like he had the police quaking in their boots too. What? Shut up, bruv. Shut up, bruv. Shut up. Is he telling the police to shut up? The now, around 25 minutes what? away from Wood Green, on the other side of Tottenham is Edmonton Green. Edmonton is in the N9 postcode, with the Gs from this area referring to themselves as N9 or the Niners. Not to be confused with another set of Niners over in Homerton, shout out Unknown T. Anyway, what, there's a whole bunch of, of different sets coming out of Edmonton, and much like the other crews that we've discussed in this video so far, the Niners heritage has evolved from other street gangs that ran Edmonton decades ago called the Edmonton Mandem or the Edmonton Firm. Out of this crew would emerge a younger generation of 
ruthless knife men who ended up with the nickname Shank Stars. Apparently these guys were so regularly using knives and shanks that the entire area of Edmonton was even referred to as Shank Town because people were well, so scared of knife crime in the area. And hey, I think they live in that motherfucking prison life outside of prison. Shanks. Nothing but fucking shanks. So when they go to jail, what you really think is going down? It ain't gonna be nothing to them. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be another, it's gonna be like they out in the free world. They used to it. You know what I'm saying? ...of the group who rapped even released early music under the banner of Shank Stars. But in the modern day, the most significant crews coming out of Edmonton represent N9. But more importantly, N9 also spawned arguably the biggest UK drill artist to ever come out of this country, Tion Wayne, Tion who was Wayne. road rapping back okay. with his N9 homie Caution all the way back in 2010, with Tion just beginning to make waves in the British rap scene in the mid 2010s along with his right hand man, Turner. Now there's a whole bunch of other Nine Boys who have touched the mic on and off over the years, many of whom you can see in the 2015 N9 Tim Westwood crib session, including people like Terminator. Another rapper that has to get an honorable mention from the area is A1 from the Nine, even though he said I was gonna get shot on Instagram, but in modern day drill, <laughs> aside from Tion and Turner, the hottest thing coming out of Edmonton <laughs> is the like, youngest set of your drill face. rappers Yo, who go by the name you go three times three. Which if you're a true internet detective, what? you'll realize quickly adds up to nine. I bet that really keeps the cops off their tail. I mean, I'm trying to gangbang, not have a maths test. Anyway, well, there's a handful of three times three rappers who are making a lot of noise recently, particularly E1, another green bandana rocking rapper who seemingly has zero fear of the police. Keep, it, like, stepping. Like, keep like, it stepping, keep it stepping, keep it stepping. Get a fuck off the block, get a fuck off the block. I want you in that fucking vehicle now! Now! Mate, if you come in, you come Get in there! Oi, open that door! Open that door! Then of course there's ZT, the self-proclaimed at CWS. What? You got to be shitting me, bro! You got to be shitting me. Now I will say that's one motherfucking difference between over there and over here. Cause if you flinch at the police over here they're fucking shooting you bro there's no way you ever gonna be able to talk to police over here and tell them to get in their motherfucking car because then they ego is gonna come in and they gonna fucking shoot your ass or you going and cuss and they gonna fucking they gonna beat your ass on the fucking ground you know what i'm saying this guy is really telling the police to get in the fucking car and get the fuck up out of here that's different they different i tell you, they them boys different bro chest shot specialist because you know he'll shank you in the chest now three times three in the nine have other rappers that are affiliated with the area and apologies to anyone from edmonton who didn't get a mention but you know how it goes there's too many names right. so let's take a closer look at some of the events that caused the decades-long deadly war between tottenham and edmonton Boy. my name is ivan barrett i'm the founder and ceo of Bam. So the war between Tottenham and the Greens has been going on for literally decades. And as a result of the violence spilling out on the streets, the feud is very well known to the police. What we do know is there is a long-standing and very violent feud between gangs in Wood Green and a rival gang in the Tottenham area. However, recently with the rise of social media and the popularity of drill music, people on the internet have never been so desperate to find out what's actually going on in the streets between these right. two warring groups. Many scoreboard videos are floating around the internet claiming to detail the many shootings and stabbings that have gone down between specific members of these groups usually based on rumors from internet forums but this isn't that kind of video instead today we're going to be taking an overall look at all of the most serious incidents in these areas that at least made it to the news or social media following along how the war on the street ended up spawning several rappers from each area who would go on to give detail about the beef in the streets in lyrics of their music now much like we've discussed in videos about the deadly gang wars in chicago and jacksonville in the past this beef started as simply as just teenagers from these two different different areas having after school fist fights back in the early noughties with these fist fights eventually escalating to knife fights and unfortunately from there it didn't take long for firearms to enter the mix mm. and soon the clashes between these two groups would become deadly a big escalation came in 2005 when an mpk member was attacked and stabbed by four shank stars at a texaco gas station being left with serious injuries this led to numerous mass brawls and tit for tat violence in the area and so while the mpk and the edmonton shank stars are warring so too are tottenham stars gang warring with the wood green mob in fact it was reported that around 20 violent in this is a lot of shit i feel like this this right here what the fuck i'm watching or listening to this is like some mafia type shit like there's so many fucking sets so many motherfucking gangs like now i understand why you're breaking it down like this because and how he's leaving people out there's so fucking much 
There's so many fucking people. Like, bro, like, what? This is insane. This is insane, bro. Like, what the fuck is really going on? Incidents where weapons were used took place between Woodgreen and Tottenham in an eight week period in early 2005. This included the shooting of a 17 year old on Broadwater Farm, three shootings in one day in April, and a hit and run on Woodgreen High Road that ended up injuring an innocent eight year old. With these back and forths leading up to another incident in 2005 where this beef reached deadly new heights. As on May the 1st, 2005, 22 year old Andre Linton from Tottenham is shot dead at close range after his car was surrounded by six youths in Woodgreen. Somebody involved in the incident was identified as Jermaine Campbell, who courts were told was a member of Woodgreen Mob. Bro. In fact, the very same person had care. actually been sentenced to three CCTV. years they back in 2002 care. for being part of that notorious Woodgreen mugging squad. And after being found guilty of the murder, he would end up being sentenced to 25 years in prison. Apparently showing no remorse to the very end, coldly taunting his victims in court, winking and making shooting hand gestures towards them from the dock. It's no surprise it then no that retaliations were seen they, in the area with Get Back getting deadly on the 28th going, of October 2006 it, it no when a Woodgreen mob That's affiliate right, named Jerome Vassal was shot in the head outside of a Woodgreen community centre. A shooting which left him brain damaged and paralysed with it taking over a year for him to succumb to his injuries and eventually pass away. Damn. Eight people were arrested in this incident but none were charged. Damn. At this point uh, the streets were super death? hot and the beef between these areas was getting serious. Shit. And at a certain point an alliance forms between the Woodgreen mob and the Edmonton Shank stars. And so stylized in green, Woodgreen to Edmonton green would become known collectively as Green City. With green bandanas That's signifying a alliances between sets that operate in these areas, suddenly their beef with the crews in Tottenham throwing up the red bandanas and NPK rocking purple was looking like some real bloods and crip shit. Or Grove <laughs> Street versus the ballers actually. About it. In 2007 like and 2008 and the beef only intensified with more bloody battles between these two groups taking place. This included another mass brawl outside of a Texaco again of all places. I swear drill rappers are sponsored by petrol stations or something. Anywho, with so much crime and violence <laughs> spilling into the streets, <laughs> the battle between Tottenham and Edmonton would eventually reach the police's radar. Especially in November 2007, when a massive street fight took place between members of NPK and Shank Stars, where numerous people were left with stab injuries, and the court being told that those responsible went on to rap about the crimes in songs. It's in the like, end, the police used DNA like they, evidence to slap they, heavy like sentences on members from both sides, and the increased police Not attention that was placed shot. on the groups around they this time definitely suffer. had the they block hot for a couple of years. Pain, like. And as these years went by, new and generations you know, of tough guys stabbing emerged stabbing from the same so areas, eventually inheriting the beef from their elders and repeating the cycles of violence seen by previous generations. Mass brawls and stabbings in Wood Green continued through 2008, and with police vowing to put a stop to the violence, cops were trying out new techniques of calming things down, including banning people from their own areas to try and stop violence being committed. In fact, the guy from this article who was banned from Wood Green was a another early rapper called G Money. Again, this was back in 2009 when UK rap that was about street goings on was referred to as road rap. And at this point, there was way less money or clout in the rap game than there would be later when the UK Ow. drill scene had flourished. Shit. In fact, around this time, many of the young men associated with these areas begun to dabble with music, releasing road raps of their own. Tion Wayne from The Nine was dropping songs and the future OFB pioneers like Heady One and RV were dropping wood green disses recorded on their block. But it would be nearly 10 years before rappers from both of these areas would be considered greats. And in that time, there would be an insane amount of bloodshed, as individuals would end up being killed on both sides of this beef, and with details about the goings on in the dangerous underworld of North London, eventually finding its way into those road raps. Shopify's point of sale system like, helps you sell at every stage Damn. of your business. Be it a fast North London was not a safe place to be in the decade that followed. And for a long stretch of time, it seemed like murder after murder was taking place in these areas. In April 2011. So basically what he's saying, if I come, if I ever come back to, to Germany, to London, wherever, don't ever go to North London. You feel me? That's basically what the fuck I'm getting from all the shit I'm watching and reacting to. You know what I'm saying? Because if I go to North London, it's just going to be like going back home to LA. You feel me? You don't know where to go, what color to wear, where to turn. You got to watch your ass, and you can't do that being out the country, bro. You got no resources, nobody you fucking know. It's, it, it, it's going to end bad. You feel me? So basically stay out of North London. All right, bet. Got you. 
15 year old Negus McLean aka Chop, labelled by the BBC as a member of Edmonton N9 based set called Dem Africans Gang, was murdered by a gang <laughs> hunting posse of four armed with knives stabbing him to death in a grisly incident that was described in court. Four people were later found guilty of murder in this case, apparently members of Enfield's EN3 Get Money Gang. Another murder in the area which is wrapped about by 3 times 3 members frequently occurred at 9.45pm on Monday the 1st of April 2013 when 19 year old Muhammad Hussein aka Chicken was killed by a Muhammad shotgun Hussein. blast on Bounces Road in Edmonton following an argument with the news reporting the scene as something straight out of an old western movie with 21 year old Nat Neil Tesfe given a life sentence for the murder which authorities said was gang related with the modern day rappers from 3 times 3 frequently rapping that he should be free. Jumping forward to 2015 the blocks in the area were incredibly hot as a lot of violence played out on both sides of the fence. On the 10th of January 2015, a teenager in Wood Green is murdered in his ends following a knife fight. That same month, an 18 year old from Tottenham who went by the name Prophet, real name Isaiah Ekpaloba, robbed a home of a member of the Wood Green mob named JD before trying to flee in a taxi. He was chased with a knife by JD and eventually murdered, with JD from Wood Green being charged with the murder and getting life in jail. And it's around what? this moment that the streets begun to interact with the music, as A1 from the Nine dropped his song Op uh, Part 2, where he dissed Prophet as well as other people associated with OFB. However, Prophet wasn't the only fallen soldier from the area who would end up getting mentioned in music. On June the 15th, 2015, 22 year old Lukey Maxwell was murdered in a stabbing in Northumberland Park. Lukey was well known to rappers from the area, particularly Tottenham grime legend Skepta, who ended up making the tribute song Lukey World, that even the king of rap himself, Drizzy Drake, ended up sharing in the form of a picture of himself wearing a Lukey World t shirt. Now, someone was charged in that case with murder, but those charges were eventually dropped. Also in June 2015, Renea Campbell, aka Mello from Wood Green, is stabbed to death outside a party, with two people eventually being convicted from Northumberland Park in so with this deadly beef going down in the streets, you'd think the safest place to be would be inside. But hell, even in prison, members from these areas are getting touched. In October 2016, Jamal Mahmood, aka- What do you mean? If they doing the shit and the stabbings in the goddamn street, it's like they home in prison. It ain't nothing new to them. So I'm not surprised that they're getting touched in prison. That is no fucking surprise. Especially motherfuckers getting fucking- 20, 25, 30 fucking years in jail, bro. Like, it's like, what I got to fucking lose? You know what I'm saying? What? Chaos is murdered in HMP Pentonville Prison, being stabbed in an argument allegedly over a parcel of drugs, before being thrown over the railings of the landing, dropping about oh, 30 niggas, feet. The alleged killers beat these their case once wild. again, with the media identifying Chaos as a member of the GMG gang from Enfield. So again, whilst not actually part of this beef, Chaos is another name that would go on to be heavily disrespected by 3x3 three three members in their raps. In fact, it really seemed like the trend of smoking dead ops on social media was also really taking off in North London around this time. Another AP member from Enfield known as Skengs, apparently the brother of Chaos who was murdered in prison, is seen on social media dissing Wood Green and saying he's smoking mellow in 2016. And I can share the thing mellow to the dome. Oh my god. Then completely independently of the beef between these two areas, in December 2019 Skengs is murdered by one of the customers he sold drugs to, apparently beating him with a claw hammer and stabbing him to death, then putting the murder weapons and the body in a big sheet that he hid in his attic, with the crime only being discovered a whopping 8 months later after the killer eight? bragged to his friends what? about the crime and even showed somebody the rotting body in the attic. What? Now eventually two people are jailed for this crime. What? How the f you- <laughs> bro. These niggas is telling on itself in the, the rap lyrics and the niggas so braggadocious he got away with it damn near for eight months but he couldn't keep his fucking mouth shut. You motherfucking duck, you that fucking braggadocious that you couldn't keep your fucking mouth shut, bro. Like, what are you... Like, it didn't feel right just you knowing to yourself, right? You gotta let somebody motherfucking know so you can feel like the man, right? Stupid, nigga, that's what you are, stupid. That story's just wild. And you know what? It really reminded me actually of what happened to Corbin Johnson, who went missing for an entire year in the video I did on the deadly gang war in Jacksonville. And just like Corbin, following his passings, Skengs was disrespected on numerous songs by the likes of 3x3, with some even being seen on social media smashing up a mural to Skengs in his area. Now look, not everything That's I've mentioned up till this point is necessarily connected or related. What I'm trying to do is just give you a backdrop to the wild shit that was going on in this oh, area during the time job, the UK drill music as we know it today was finding its voice. This is 
the environment drill rappers were coming up in, and these are the situations that they would be speaking about in their music. I like and over time, power, a lot of young men from these really areas like, would begin to release like absolutely power. fire music, finally getting themselves a chance to make money legally and get into a lucrative career on a path of safety away from the streets. But for some, even with the opportunity of going straight through music on the table, the temptation to slip back into old habits comes strong. And time after time, the unfortunate truth is it seems like people from this area were forced to choose a safe career making music and staying away from the streets or choose violence. And they chose Want what? to promote your violence? tracks on Spotify for free. Getting discovered as a musical artist in the digital age doesn't require campaigning. Anyway, it's said that around a hundred people were fighting in the street. Some were armed with weapons and others were even swinging the barriers around. For his role in this incident, Tion Wayne ended up being sentenced to 16 months in prison. And he would later rap on his number one song, Body. When I punch man, it's grievous. They played back the CCTV. When I banged him, my defense said Jesus. So for the majority of 2017, Tion Wayne was gone. And the God, what's up with these niggas over there? Like, like nigga, no remorse. And it's in their fucking lyrics, even if they play that shit in court. Like, they doing Young Thug like that right now. You feel me? Like, they, they letting the, uh, their lyrics be admitted into court. These motherfuckers don't give a fuck. He said, I banged on my man's head. And the, his own got the defense was like, God damn, nigga. You know what I'm saying? How are we supposed to defend this? Like, you said you did it. What? What? This shit is mind blowing. You feel me? Like what? Momentum that he had been building up in the rap game slammed to a halt too. Ironically though, as Tion was going in on the territory of his rivals over in Tottenham, the 30 month sentence that Hedy One got in 2014 for dealing drugs was coming to an end. In February, 2017, Hedy One gets out of jail and quickly releases his fresh home song, Losses and Winnings. Quickly hitting the ground running with his day one homie RV, with them doing up a whole bunch of fire freestyles as a duo. They released a joint mixtape, Drillers and Trappers, in July, and throughout the rest of 2017, in the absence of Tion Wayne, RV and Hedy One are making some serious waves in music. And not just as a duo, because Hedy is putting in that work solo, truly trying to make a name for himself. His Street Heat freestyle was legendary and got people excited to hear more solo hits from him. And in October 2017, his solo banger live from the T drops and doesn't disappoint fans. So with Hedy picking up that heat in the streets, the UK drill scene begins to get more and more popping. And it's not just OFB making progress with the music too, because at a certain point, the Wood Green members decide to get in on the action too. In October 2017, Lamps from Wood Green, along with his homies Rams and Rids, released their drill song, No Lies, containing numerous lyrics where Lamps disses NPK rivals, with this track being followed with the song Looking For Who. Another track where Lamps from Wood Green says that he's regularly stabbing people from the N17 postcode. And so with the feud between these areas getting more and more public and finding its way into music, that feud would eventually once again spill out into the streets. And at the start of 2018, there would be a series of high profile clashes between members of these crews. On the 26th of January, 2018, Hedy One is attacked by Wood Green members after playing a show at Bedfordshire Uni, not far from London. Here, he's confronted by Wood Green members outside of a university accommodation where he's basically threatened, dragged around, beaten, and kind of chased off the campus, all the while tucking his hand into a man bag as if he has a weapon, but one is never produced. But what's even more shocking than the incident itself is the brazen way those that carried it out filmed the entire thing and posted it up to Snapchat. Once it was up, the footage was circulating quickly. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. These... Just what I don't think it could get any more crazy, it ain't the CCTV video on them doing the shit they doing. These motherfuckers is taking their motherfucking phones, recording the whole crime, and posting it to social media. What? I ain't gonna lie, bro. Social media could be a crazy fucking drug. But not enough for me to go put my motherfucking crimes on goddamn TV. I promise you this. If I ever did some shit, you ain't hearing shit from me. I ain't bragging to nobody. It ain't, nigga. You could think I'm the... The softest nigga in the motherfucking world. I wouldn't give two shits, nigga. I know what I can do and I know what I did. Y'all niggas can't, can't hold water in your motherfucking mouth. So you just rather brag about it and talk about it and tell about it. Just go get everything taken away from you. You feel me? Like, nigga, I don't give a fuck. Call me what you want. I ain't telling you motherfuckers a goddamn thing. You feel me?
specifically amongst the drill community, and people were clowning Heady One. A month, Heady One had signed a full-blown record deal with Sony's Relentless Records imprint, who re-released No Better Commercial. Boy. It's kind of ironic that Heady One sort of had to be subjected to a horrible physical gang altercation in order to get the attention that he needed to sign a legit record deal. But how he got it doesn't matter. The important thing was that Heady was now officially on and- But here, I'm the CEO and founder of National Business Capital. You know, I don't know if you know this, right but now, National Business Capital is- a These motherfuckers know how to get to it. Get out the fucking hood, but just can't seem to leave the motherfucker when they get to it. On February the 3rd, 2018 at 1.30am, police were called to Kemble Road at the junction of St. Mary's Close in Tottenham after reports of a stabbing. It turned out that a young man named Kobe was driving on the street when he was rammed off the road by another vehicle. Apparently Kobe was a former gang member affiliated with the Northumberland Park area in Tottenham with convictions for violence all the way back in 2012. But by 2018, Kobe had seemingly distanced himself from the streets and was employed as a youth worker, helping troubled people in the community oh break God. the cycle like he did. Sadly though, that day when he was rammed by rivals from Wood Green, they didn't care one bit that he had turned his life around and moved away from the streets. So after being rammed off the road, numerous people jumped out the car with poles and knives, attacking Kobe, leaving him stabbed, dying at the scene. And his shocking 999 phone call was even eventually broadcast where he pleaded to paramedics to come to the scene, whilst Kobe seemingly already knew that it was too late. I've got stabbed. Where are you, mate? Jet Mary's called. Jet Mary. I'm dead. DNA evidence was found in the car on both the airbags and seatbelts, linking multiple Wood Green Mob affiliates to the crime, with the suggestion. So you telling me, throughout this whole shit I've been doing in reaction to all three or two feet or whatever. I've been saying why motherfuckers can't leave and leave shit alone. I finally see a motherfucker that leaves, goes and helps the use, and the niggas still go find him and kill him. So, what the fuck? It don't get no, you know what I'm saying? No. He changed his life around. No, was that fucking karma for the shit he was doing? You know what I'm saying? To come back and bite him in the ass? It still seems crazy because then he turned around and he was helping the youth. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to think about that shit sometimes. Like, when, when somebody changed their life around and shit like this happened to them, the only thing you can think of is it had to be karma for some shit they did way back in the day. Other than that, it makes no sense. It's like, why they have to go? It's the one motherfucking shit I've been saying throughout these whole videos and I actually see a motherfucker change his life around and they still find his ass and kill him. Wow, bro. Question that Lamps from Wood Green was one of the people who had jumped out of the car, attacking Kobe, and another man named that, Neron Gorty, who was labeled by demon, police huh? as the driver. He was picked up by police and gave a full no comment interview. Were you one of the guys with a knife in his hand stabbing him? No Were you one of the ones holding him while he was stabbed? No Did you murder Kobe? But comment or none, it seemed that the DNA evidence that was left on the airbag was indisputable. And on the 16th of August, 2018, Neron Quarty is convicted of the murder of Kobe, being sentenced to 26 years in prison. Meanwhile, Lamps's involvement in this murder wouldn't be identified by the police until some time later. And unfortunately, by the time they worked out that Lamps was involved in the murder of Kobe, it was too late. And even with Kobe's murder successfully carried out, apparently the Wood Green mob was still thirsty for blood. In fact, apparently members in the area had even planned an attack Damn. on Kobe's funeral, with police getting intelligence and intercepting the crew in an insane police chase Damn. that was even caught on camera, with the cops ultimately foiling the planned ride out on the funeral. Whoa! 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 First contact. Hello, yes, I think there's been a shooting at Wood Green. Um, sorry, I, what, sorry? Um, I had some gunshots fired, somebody on a motorbike. Just over a month after the murder of Kobe, late at night on the 7th of March 2018, Lamps posted his location on Snapchat, seemingly gesturing for his ops to come and pull up on him. And he had shown quite clearly for the whole of North London to see that he that was chilling outside the McDonald's bad? at the Hollywood Bowl Entertainment Complex in Wood Green. Now, we already know that Lamps was known to have numerous enemies from all over London and a feared reputation in the area. That and for those that wanted to cause him harm, this would be the perfect location. opportunity. And 
After getting the drop on Lamps, two unidentified individuals pulled up to the area on a moped, arriving at the Hollywood Bowl in Wood Green and spinning the block twice. On this ride, they seemingly caught Lamps sat with a group of people in the stairwell of the View Cinema in this complex. And for a moment, it even looked like Lamps was running towards the door ready for action, perhaps not realizing just how dangerous those people on that moped were. Because when Lamps approached the glass door leading out of the cinema, he was immediately shot in the head through the window. This shot was fatal and Lamps was left dead at the scene. And Lamps' Bro. final moments were captured on CCTV, as well as amateur footage of emergency services trying to revive him at the scene, which once again is far too shocking to show you on YouTube. Anywho, after the shooting, the cinema was taped off and the area was considered the scene of a homicide. But the cops wouldn't- There's always somebody bigger and badder. Karma or somebody bigger and badder. You, I don't, listen. At the end of the fucking day, I don't give a fuck who you are. We are all human. I don't give a fuck how implanted in your head, how hard you think you are. Nigga, a bullet will kill you. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can talk, you know what's crazy is a motherfucker talk the most shit like, nigga, blah, 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 and then turn around and be laying on the fucking ground looking like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's the most dumb, like, bro, it makes no fucking sense. You're not that bad where you can't fucking, motherfucker, you, you can take bullets and just, you know what I'm saying? And then the motherfuckers that do survive, they get shot in the right place and survive. Then they in the hospital bed talking shit. Like, motherfucker, you just don't give a fuck. You may as well die. You know what I'm saying? Like, because, motherfucker, now you talking shit, and now they're going to come get your ass again at some fucking point. Nigga, you not going to make it another year. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's always somebody bigger and better, bro. This motherfucking lamp star, he was a fucking demon. He killed himself. He dropped his fucking location. What did he think was going to happen? I'm at a loss for words, bro. I'm at a loss for words, to be honest with you wouldn't have much to go on, because after the drill was done, the shooters immediately fled the scene on that moped without leaving a trace. Leaving police truly baffled as to who no committed trace. what looked like the oh, perfect crime. A drive-by shooting from a moving moped, with both the shooter and the driver wearing crash helmets, getting a headshot, and then immediately fleeing the scene, yeah. leaving Headshot. no evidence. The killing of Lamps was such a mystery to the Met police and the public, the case even ended up appearing on the TV crime documentary, The Met Policing London, along with the Kobe incident. The following day, the investigation into the shooting of Kelvin Odunyi is picked up by the same team investigating the murder of Kobe Nelson. There is limited opportunities in relation to the identification of the suspects at this time. So, who killed Lamps? Well, despite there being a whole bunch of crackpot theories floating around on Reddit and YouTube, a lot of different people all over London likely wanted Lamps dead. Because as we know, Wood Green and Lamps himself had yeah. many beefs all over London far beyond Tottenham. Fuck Hoxton as well, yeah? A beef hat me. To this day, the crime remains unsolved. And even though Reddit detectives have several theories on who might have been responsible, there really isn't anything truly conclusive. The and if there was, CCTV trust me, the cops will be on it before with Reddit or me. But regardless of whether or not they even had anything to do with this crime, simply because of the ongoing Go between brag the two about. areas. Following you know the killing of Lamps, Tottenham rappers caught. would put the utmost disrespect gotta, on his name. On KK on from MPK posted a picture of the unfixed door from the crime scene, talking about the killing okay. of Lamps on phone them like it was goddamn shy rack. Yeah, man, them niggas still ain't fixed that shit, boy. <laughs> And he's still trying to re-up on the customers on Fawn and Grave. RV from OFB oh, drove past with the caption, ha ha. Like Abracadabra was later seen posting a snap at what appeared to be Lamps' grave site. And beyond the ops, even young drill fans on the internet were showing disrespect, with some going as far as to recreate the Lamps murder on GTA 5, reusing the original 999 audio recordings from the scene of the crime. <laughs> But eventually, the biggest disrespect on Lamps' name would come when younger NPK members would release an entire song dedicated to dissing Lamps. Over a year after his death, on May the 26th, 2019, NPK rapper Sin Squad dropped the song Kelvin's Coffin. The hook of the song is them basically saying yeah, that their shotgun awesome. is the same length as Kelvin or Lamps' coffin, as well as rapping that they're smoking on Mellow and Chop, Fallen Wood Green members mentioned at the start of this story. In oh, fact, Kelvin's really Coffin awesome was an action. unusual disrespectful song for the UK drill scene. Hell, it even made the news for being so demonic. 
But anyway, setting aside the music for a minute in the streets, after Lamps was murdered, retaliation would apparently come immediately. The day after the murder, there was a massive fight outside of a school nearby where a boy was stabbed, which police said may have been related. Then, at the end of March 2018, another attack took place at Farringdon's Tinseltown Diner, where both a man and woman were filmed at being attacked on the floor in a confrontation apparently between MPK and Wood Green members. And soon after this physical altercation, on the 2nd of April 2018, just after 9.30pm, a silver Vauxhall Mariva pulls up at Chalgrove Road, just round the corner from Northumberland Park Station, where shots are fired from a 32 caliber handgun in a drive-by shooting, apparently targeting an MPK member, but unfortunately the bullets didn't hit their intended target, instead hitting a teenage girl in the chest, leaving her dead at the scene. The victim was 17-year-old Tanisha Melbourne, a young girl from the Tottenham area who had been seen in the past on social media with rappers from OFB and MPK. No one was ever charged for this murder, despite the burned out car used for the drill being found in nearby Barnet only a few days later. And following the incident, people were talking about it on social media, even hashtagging MPK, with the media suggesting that all these events were linked together as part of the ongoing war between these two gangs. And so, with seemingly innocent 17 year olds ending up dead in drive-by shootings, at this point the violence is so bad, the local community activists are demonstrating and calling for change. Where young people feel scared to go to Wood Green, and Wood Green young people feel scared to come to Tottenham, that should not happen in London. Stop making YouTubers yeah, rich in 2024. Button. By watching you know videos saying? on YouTube just like this one, you're making other YouTubers pass. Right, in July 2018, man. Tion Wayne gets out of jail looking mad crusty, hitting the ground ah, running music clear, beating himself crusty, a shape yeah. up, and dropping his fresh home song, Home. That was followed by another solo track called On My Life, but it was on features that Tion would be getting to that bag, taking his career to new heights. As in November 2018, Tion Wayne appears on the track Options with NSG, which goes on to become the biggest song of his career, charting at number seven. But naturally, not everybody was celebrating Tion's triumphant return to the rap game, as both RV and Heady One are seen hating on Tion on social media, saying they have to skip his part of the song. But in all fairness, there really wasn't anything to be jealous of when it came to Tion Wayne, because in the time he'd been locked up, Heady One had moved on to bigger things, signing his record deal and dropping big projects like his The One mixtape, spawning the classic drill anthem Golden Boot, along with his previous hit No Better, and that was followed up by his The One Two project, which had more big hits like Banter On Me and Brony, and with big songs doing numbers amongst the fans, Heady would continue to make moves in the industry doing headline shows, and ending the year with the big drop of his song Of Course. Easing into the start of 2019 with the biggest drop of his career to date, the track 18 Hunter along with Dave that dropped on the 3rd of January 2019. This is a song that's basically all about paying £1,800 for a rusty shotgun to use on your ops. And the song includes lines about riding through the nine with skengs, aka guns, but in reality, by this point, Heady One was far from chopping ops at the farm block and more copping lamb chops from the farm shop, because 18 <laughs> Hunter with Dave ended up going five on the UK singles charts, really representing Heady One's commercial breakthrough moment. Nearly a year on from being ambushed and attacked on camera by ops outside of a show at a university, Heady One is landing top five hits on the charts and truly making a name for himself in the mainstream music industry. And so whilst Heady was headed for greatness and setting the template for the younger generation of OFB, on February the 4th, 2018, the song Bruck It will drop, introducing the world to some of the younger generation of OFB rappers, including Band OK, Double L's, and Boogie B. And soon there would be another big name joining that lineup, SJ, who would appear on the Farm Block Anthem and the UK version of King Bones oh, to the O, Band B on the Niz, which released on October the 2nd, uh, no, was up, this was the killed. first big hit featuring the OFB younger trio Band OK, Double L's and SJ, with this track becoming an instant classic in the area and SJ himself suggesting that ever since that song dropped, he's had the bad bees all over him. So finally, the youngers growing up on this estate had something to focus on. With these songs, they were building a legal form of income through music, giving them something else to focus on outside of right. their activity in the streets. But, that but unfortunately, they some of them the would remain form, a little too close to the streets other to shit take advantage on. of the opportunity do, that the rap game would soon offer. Only a few weeks they after the song Bucket was released, got on February the 18th, 2018, a 19 year old named Lewis Blackman, aka you know Dossie, gate crashes a party in Kensington. When he gets inside, he allegedly confronts Boogie B from OFB, robbing him of a chain and stabbing him before fleeing the house. However, when he gets outside, he's chased by Boogie B, who allegedly led a group of around 20 young men armed with weapons chasing Lewis. He was caught, stabbed in the back with a fatal blow administered by Boogie B, and then stabbed up around 13 more times by numerous teenagers who were part of that mob. That's a year later, Boogie B is jailed for murder and sentenced to 20 years in prison for his role in leading the attack. The loss of Boogie B was a major 
major blow for the OFB Youngers, who at this point were still just emerging and making a name for themselves in the drill scene. A bit like Tion Wayne when he had that fight, Boogie B was a promising rapper, but one night of madness and the choice of violence ultimately left him in jail, facing a two decade long sentence, and his music career completely over before it had really gotten a chance to flourish. Mm -hmm. But sadly, Boogie B wouldn't be the only one. <laughs> this shit keeps going deeper and deeper! You know what I'm saying? On January the 12th, what? 2019, a triple stabbing takes place after a confrontation between young men from N9 and members from OFB and MPK in the 4th Street McDonald's near Wood Green. And it was rumoured that SJ from OFB was involved in this incident. Three men were stabbed and the CCTV of the entire fight inside the McDonald's leaked, which again is way too shocking to show you on YouTube. You know, so anyway, with this kind of shit going and down, and it's safe to say that, that the beef between crews from Tottenham and Green saying? City uh, is I'm truly bright. And the shit, hatred bro. between the these two groups has of course made its way to drill music, oh, and by this point at the start of 2019, Band OK, SJ and Double L's have become the hottest trio in drill music. On January the 26th, their song Purge drops, which is littered with references to catching and shooting anything that's green, and at least in SJ's case, the entire world would soon see just how serious him and his friends were about catching anything green and killing them. As on February the 21st, 2019, SJ takes his mother's Peugeot 307, along with Sneaks and Osab from NPK, out for a drive eventually parking this car back at the Broadwater Farm Estate, with the car being a meeting point for a gang meetup the following day. And then on the evening of February the 22nd, 2019, SJ would meet with MPK affiliates Osav, Sneaks, as well as three other men at his mother's parked car. At the car, they would change clothes, riding out around an hour later on push bike towards Wood Green. This group of cyclists grew to include SJ, Sneaks, Trills, Osav, Shems, and two other unidentified males riding through the city with their faces covered. Upon the arrival to a Wood Green McDonald's, Sneaks, Trills, and Osav, along with an unidentified male, enter the restaurant and attempt to rob somebody. And then after this altercation, the group spot another group of four people, two of whom are confirmed affiliates of Wood Green's 2-2 mob. This includes a man named Jason Frazier and another named Kamali Gabadon Link, aka K1. So after countless lyrics saying they'll kill anything they catch that's green, after spotting their green ops in Wood Green territory, all of the Tottenham boys involved in the ride out drop their bikes, with some drawing weapons and running towards that group of enemies. Apparently Shems pulled a semi-automatic handgun firing indiscriminately in the direction of the Wood Green members, ultimately missing the target with a bullet going into a nearby shop, narrowly missing innocent customers. Meanwhile, SJ and Sneaks both pull out large silver knives. Trills pulled out a black knife, and Osav had his hand in his coat, which the court were told represented a concealed weapon. At this point, the Wood Green affiliates attempted to flee the scene whilst being chased by this gang of masked and armed young men. In fact, these scenes were even captured on amateur video by shocked diners eating nearby in a Nando's restaurant. So, attempting to flee, K1 and Frazier split up, taking different routes to try and get back to their car. And during this attempted escape, Frazier is cornered where he's beaten, stabbed eight times, and shot in the buttocks with a shotgun. Moments before the gang are able to deliver a fatal blow to him, however, K1 arrives in a silver Vauxhall Corsa, driving over the gang's bikes and crushing the one belonging to Trills. In this failed attempt to scare off the attackers, K1 unfortunately became the primary target of their attack, with the drillers from Tottenham leaving behind Frazier, who miraculously survives those injuries. So at this point, everybody is running towards K1 in the Vauxhall Corsa that he's driving, with Shems raising a handgun ready to fire at the car, and K1 trying to spin around the car, but ultimately being trapped between two other parked vehicles. And whilst he's pinned there, the gang unload on that Corsa, attempting to get to K1. One person shoots out a car window before jumping on the bonnet, trying to smash through the windscreen with a gun. Another person jumps on the hood of the car with a machete, trying to chop through the glass. Now for the record, K1 allegedly had a shotgun in the trunk of this car and multiple knives, all of which he couldn't retrieve whilst this attack was going oh. on. And so at this point, it seems that K1 realizes that he is stuck and his only option is to flee the car, quickly jumping out and running into the nearby coffee and cream hair salon. And this shop was open, full of customers so it got to be the worst to know you got glamours and heaters in the trunk and shanks and you can't even get to them. Now, I think I saw this in my previous video. I'm like, why the fuck did he get out the car and run? And now I know why. Because they were shooting at the goddamn and breaking out the windows. So it makes sense. I thought they just had knives and they couldn't get in. But now it makes sense to why he got out and ran. That got to be the worst. I ain't, bro, I ain't going to load you, bro. These little niggas is demons. All of them. They all demons. And you can't help no goddamn demon. You know what I'm saying? At all. And now he's putting other innocent people because he ran into a, 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 a fucking a salon full of uh, customers.
including a four-year-old, an eight-year-old, a baby, and their shocked parents. But the gang apparently weren't bothered by the amount of witnesses. And so as they rushed into the store, care. the gang descended on K1 with knives out, inflicting multiple vicious stab wounds, leaving K1 fatally wounded, ultimately dying later in the hospital. K1 was killed in one of the most savage and shocking murders to ever take place on the streets of London. The attack was described by the BBC as reminiscent of a Hollywood film, but to make things even more crazy, after the murder took place, the entire group cycled together back to Broadwater Farm, right up to SJ's mum's Peugeot, changing their clothes in front of the estate's many CCTV cameras. With the police apparently using yeah, Broadwater Farm's CCTV surveillance video to identify five people involved in this attack. But that identification would take some time, and for at least a little while the police would have no idea who was responsible. In fact, just after the brazen murder, police immediately made their way to the Broadwater Farm estate, even stopping trills of NPK, who gave the police false information, and since he'd already hidden his weapon, the police had nothing to hold him on, with him walking away from officers, boldly proclaiming, I hope you lot cut down on knife violence and all that. But if you thought that was brazen, things only get more shocking. As following the murder of K1 with the direct involvement of SJ, SJ continues rapping along with Band OK and Double L's, dropping numerous songs in the month that followed the murder of K1, including the May 5th release of the trio's biggest track, Ambush, which has unflattering lyrics in it where SJ talks about pressing triggers and being a chest shot chinger when it comes to stabbings. Now obviously these are just general lines talking about the lifestyle that he witnessed growing up, but unfortunately for SJ, this track and its references to the violent gang life he lived would be used in court as supporting evidence that SJ and his associates were known to carry weapons and engage in gang activity. But Ambush was really one of the more tame examples, because there were numerous examples of SJ and other members dropping lyrics that seemed to reference the killing of K1. K was in my risen hell and fuck karate with street fighting joke. The worst of it really came out during the OFB Younger's Crib session with Tim Westwood. Double L's is dropping lyrics about raising the crime rate in the N22 area. SJ went on to dislike lamps numerous times too, and the MPK youngers were also there to drop some incredibly disrespectful lyrics as well. In fact, some of them were so offensive they ended up being censored or taken out of the final version that was posted to YouTube, but because a lot of these lyrics are in other songs or freestyles, it's pretty easy to find out what they were saying. Like MPK Tugger, referencing the crew's involvement in the Fall Street stabbing outside of McDonald's at the start of 2019, as well as another brazen line that also appears in Kelvin's Coffin, saying, something got tanned in the nine, my mum's like, oh no, what happened? I said, you're late on news, the gang's just done a quadruple stabbing. This was seemingly a reference to a 2018 incident where four men were stabbed in Edmonton following a car crash, with the authorities linking it to a triple drive-by that occurred only 24 hours before, where a 22-year-old man and a 16-year-old boy were both injured by a shotgun blast in a minicab. Madness. But one of the most shocking lines that had also appeared on the Sin Squad song Anti-Green saw MPK members mentioning Y-Dot, who is allegedly a relative of K1, saying that he's suicidal and that they're going to shoot him in the face, with Tugger going on to rap lyrics that were also used in MPK's true story. Story Part 2, where they mocked Y-Dot for apparently being depressed about K1's murder, with the final incriminating line being delivered by Sneaks, who was quite literally there for the K1 murder, saying, anything green get bun, lamps got put in a spliff, and K1 got put in a blunt. Well, this wasn't a great look. By the 21st of April, Trills and Shems of MPK had been arrested. Then on May the 16th, 2019, it's revealed that SJ has also been arrested for murder only days after their Westwood crib session is recorded, with the final suspects being Osav and Sneaks, who were arrested on the 10th of July. And what's weird is that even facing a murder charge, SJ didn't even attempt to keep a low profile. On June the 2nd, he drops his track Youngest in Charge from Jail, which included lines dissing his ops from 3x3, E1 and ZT, for just starting to rap, with them having only recently dropped their first proper disrespectful track, just the beginning in May 2019. And in Youngest in Charge, SJ also drops lyrics about spotting ops and taking them out, and dissing lamps again. Funnily enough, it was later revealed that whilst SJ was sitting in prison awaiting his murder trial, he was apparently offered a 150 thousand pound record deal off yeah. the strength of these tracks he was releasing from prison. Anywho, with the overwhelming amount of actual evidence that the authorities had on SJ and the NPK crew, it's no surprise then that in December 2019, SJ is found guilty of murder in the K1 case. Along with Sneaks, Trills, Shems and Osav from NPK, with SJ, Sneaks and Osav getting 21 years in jail, Trills 25 and Shems a whopping 28 years in Sheesh. prison. And in a way, what happened to SJ was really the truest example of the consequences of living this road life. SJ was rapping about being real, and he really was involved. But the unfortunate right. result is, he now has to live with the consequences of getting caught. But just when you thought the story deal. was over, mm. shit gets crazy once again. As when it came for the final sentencing in this case, a massive fight broke out in court as SJ and the four other MPK members all blamed each other for the murder, accusing each other of snitching, with many of these accusations right. playing out in the run-up to the sentencing in jailhouse Snapchat posts between the defendants, with all of this pressure building up to a crazy moment at the sentencing when all five defendants have a wild fist 
this fight in the dock at court. It apparently took 10 court officers to restrain the defendants, and the fight was apparently so wild that Sneaks of NPK's stepdad jumped nine foot down from the public gallery into the floor of the courtroom to get involved in the fight. That's a long way down. And when he was down there, he apparently even tussled directly with the prosecutor of the case, Oliver Glasgow QC, who he apparently threatened to murder whilst being restrained by courtroom security. A bonehead move that ended up landing him in jail Over for here? seven months you too. Like and that, understandably, no this last courtroom. minute beef between you know OFB's SJ and the MPK crew who had all done the crime together caused a split between the formerly allied OFB and NPK, which continues to this day. Meaning that OFB members would now have to look over their shoulder for ops and former friends turned ops. And the sad truth is that while SJ was sat in jail awaiting punishment for the murder that he'd been involved in, out on the streets, OFB would be clashing with Edmonton harder than ever, as a young generation of green bandana rocking drill rappers would emerge calling themselves three times three and drawing out the OFB rappers at the highest level. This is amazing. Amazing. Despite the fact that by mid-2019, Tion Wayne had become a bona fide rap star with four When it comes to managing risk, investing through a cryptocurrency exchange presents some factors that are crucial to consider. At four charting songs under his At the end of the day, the only thing I gotta really say is these motherfuckers know how to get to the bag. They know how to get to the bag at a very early age. They just don't know how to keep it. Like, I've never seen so many motherfucking rappers, you know what I'm saying, get to the bag so easy and just stay persistent with it and get there and fuck it up. I've never seen it. This this is a fucking mate, and I'm talking about 15, 16, 17. These ain't no fucking 25, 30 year old motherfuckers. These is kids getting to it early. And then they go fuck it up. It ain't like one motherfucker made it out the whole goddamn group. It's like fucking all 10 of them made it. You know what I'm saying? Then one go to jail, then another one blow up. Or they all blow up and then three go to jail. And then somebody else carries a torch. This shit madness. Madness. Bell, he clearly was still in touch with the streets. Because on June the 17th, 2019, Kush from OFB was caught on camera at a set of traffic lights by Tion Wayne, who filmed him doing the dash, cutting through a red light to escape. Go. Come out the car. Come out the car. Where you going? Come on, look at these guys, bro. Where are you going? Look at you. Look. After this, Kush replied in a video, not looking particularly shaken up by the incident. I'm sitting in the fucking traffic. I'm looking at my phone. Then I've seen a man run up behind like my car. He's running up behind me, you get me? Gone to my driver's side. But then he's got his phone out. He's like, come out of the car, come out of the car. I've looked at him. I've looked to the left, I'm seeing another you running up next to me. Then I've looked back at him. That's when he's tried to the video from me. Look back at him. You get me? I've just popped my little signs and a cut. However, other OFB affiliates woke up to the footage and weren't too happy. RV at Tion Wayne saying, when I saw you, you said you ain't got beef with a man down. From here, we'd see the likes of RB and A1 from the Nine going back and forth on Twitter. And clearly people from all sides were nervous being out public and armed with the beef raging on. With this being the very month that a viral clip circulated, a band okay seemed tweaking after a fan snuck up on him from behind. And even those at the very top of the group didn't feel like they could be safe out in public without being armed. Because that same month on the 25th of June, 2019, Hedy One is caught with a knife after a traffic stop where he ran from the police. He fortunately makes bail so he can play Glastonbury and release his new album, but he is later jailed for possession of that knife at the very height of his career. So between catching that case oh, and going bro. to jail, Hedy One releases his commercial mixtape Music and Road, which is a runaway success peaking at number five in the UK albums charts and containing his hit solo song Both, which landed at number 13 on the singles charts. With both of these projects cementing Hedy One's place as one of the true goats of the drill scene, but while Hedy's going commercial and making music that represents Presents an evolution away from the street activity he was formerly known for. In contrast, Farm Block's top driller RV is still on smoke, releasing his excellent Savage EP, which is just drill bangers back to back. Definitely go and check that out if you haven't. And the project itself happens to contain another smasher of a song, Crep Shop, featuring the entire trio of SJ, Band OK, and Double L's. With this releasing whilst SJ is still on jail awaiting his trial, with that song including a famous bar that's appeared on numerous other OFB songs and freestyles, saying Try Gun Lean Get Shot from the Backseat, a diss aimed at Russ who had a song Gun 
Young Lean and collaborated with Tion Wayne on the song Keisha and Becky. In fact, from here, numerous OFB Youngers would release tracks where they went at Tion Wayne calling him a joker or a muppet, but the N9 and the Free Times Free Boys clearly weren't taking this lightly. As I mentioned previously, much to the disappointment of SJ, in May 2019, the Three Times Three Youngers, E1 and ZT, released their breakout track Just the Beginning, which was littered with disses towards Tottenham. And by September 2019, Three Times Three were spotted on social media recording their own Tim Westwood crib session. And you know these get super grimy. In fact, the Three Times Three crib session was quickly taken down for harassment and bullying. And that's because it had so many disrespectful lyrics in it, like lines from the Three Times Three song No Cap, where they say they smoke Kobe, lines from Just the Beginning smoke saying they're what? smoking numerous people, and oh, the disrespect Kobe. in music is soon accompanied by disrespect on the streets too. On September 17, 2019, there's a shooting at Kenny's Barber's in Wood Green. RV posts up a snap of him at the location laughing. <laughs> now that post goes a lot deeper than you might think, because apparently in 2012, a 15-year-old boy was stabbed there, a case in which RV was actually implicated way back, with him being sentenced to seven years in a youth offenders institute at the time, and there was another shooting at that same location in 2014. Then in November, Trapo from OFB claimed that 3 times 3 actually ran him over, with 3 times 3 members clapping back on Snap seemingly acknowledging this went down. A couple weeks after that, Brogger and Heady One are all up on Snapchat mocking the ops once again, and as we get into 2020, at the top of the year, Heady One is finally finally sent to jail for six months for getting caught with that knife the previous year. Meanwhile, SJ is still sat in jail, settling into his next few decades in the can, still recording and releasing freestyles, dissing dead ops from his cell. Speaking of which, the split between OFB and NPK that happened after the courtroom fight ended up reaching the streets in February 2020 when NPK members allegedly attacked OFB members with knives, once again in a hair salon, an incident that was caught on video and once again way too shocking to show you on YouTube. And so while Hedy Wine is sat in jail loyalty, at the top I'm of 2020 you, after being caught with a knife, Tion Wayne is just going from strength to strength after his appearance on that NSG single Options. By May 2020, he had racked up a whopping seven entries on the UK singles charts, including Bally with Swarms and Keisha and Becky with Russ, at which point he would pop up on a track with the leader of the most feared gang in all of Watford, the Sidemen, appearing on the tune Houdini with KSI, the charted at number six, and then the track I Don't Know, I Don't Know, with Stormzy and Dutch Avelli that hit number seven. Basically, Tion Wayne was on a roll, everything he touched turned to gold, and clearly, the Ops weren't gonna be happy about this. In July 2020, when Tion Wayne is spotted in the studio with Birmingham rapper Mist, RV pipes up on Twitter, dissing them both. With Tion clapping back, saying, lol, you're so selective, it's embarrassing, laughing face. You're a big man, keep it on the roads and stop tweeting. Fix your career and your bank account before you come on here trying to be a comedian, you waste man. This is the only clout I'm giving you. With Tion's description of them as being selective, referring to the fact that if RV is pissed off that Mist is working with one of his ops, Tion Wayne, why didn't he have that same energy for chart-topping king of grind Stormzy, who a year before working with Tion Wayne on the track I Don't Know, collaborated with Heady One on the track Audacity, which charted at number two, and again only three months after this back and forth appearing with Stormzy again on Heady's hit song Ain't It Different along with AJ Tracy, giving Heady One a number two chart hit, the highest single song performance of his career. But regardless of the perceived selectiveness, RV still decided to clap back at Tion, saying, drill music really corrupting people's brains, lol. When man were doing afro beats, no one had any energy or any chat for me, especially when we were face to face. But now, everyone's a gangster. With Tion replying again, saying, when we were face to face, you didn't say or do shit, my guy. Lol, what are you on about? These lies, your hairline can't keep up, bro. Pack it in. <laughs> now, to their credit, Tion went in RV both very up, funny. Bro. But the verbal wasn't Yikes. done, because only two days after this back and forth, Abracadabra from OFB comes through and drops his enormous enormous track on deck. And this features extensive lyrics dissing the N9 boys and questioning if they have any guns on their estate with Abracadabra dropping these disses while flipping lyrics from Tion Wayne's very own song, I Don't Know. Then when the OFB All-Star remix drops the following month, Abra brings through pretty much the whole of the Broadwater Farm estate lined up to pop shots at both the Nine Boys and the Twos. But while the rest of OFB were on gang business, Heady One is handling business. After getting out of jail in April 2020, he would get to work and by July, Heady One was making the biggest move a UK drill rapper has probably ever made in their career. Releasing the only U freestyle featuring Canadian drill rapper Drizzy Drake, okay. taking Heady One's reputation to a whole new level okay. internationally. In my opinion, Heady One completely washed Drake on this track, even though Drake's verse was very, very good. And hell, it's sounds like Drake agrees with me because around the time of the release of the song, Drizzy himself came out to say that Heady One is the best drill artist in the world. The only U freestyle hit number five in the UK singles charts and charted at numerous other countries internationally. But most people that heard the track probably didn't even realize what Heady was even talking about. The song has lines mentioning Boogie B's murder case and the song ends on a lyric where 
Vinny basically says that he's trying to give guns to his youngers because the beef in his area is on and they're straight up toosy sliding for the gang. And I tell you what, Hedy wasn't lying about the beef frying because literally only three days after his only U freestyle drops, there's a triple shooting on the Broadwater Farm Estate. Police were called here to the Broadwater Farm Estate just These before 1am this morning to report the gunfire. When they got yeah, here, they about, discovered three individuals who had been shot at. Like, now, the police Drake, are keen to trace a car Stormzy, that was used in AJ, the shooting. AJ now, Tracy, it's believed like, that an two groups would occur on October beeping, the 8th, 2020, like when Iscot from OFB is stabbed in the eye on a train by three teenagers armed with machetes, apparently one of whom was as young as 14 years old. There's a lot of rumours about exactly who was involved in this, which I don't want to spread, but it has been suggested that those involved might have had ties to both 3 Times 3 and NPK, with the fact that both 3 Times 3 and NPK members posted on social media mocking the situation after it happened. Apparently the three teens responsible have been charged with attempted murder along with lesser charges and it had even been said on the news that the individual attacked had been left blind in one eye. Man, it would take a few months for Iscot to actually bro. come out and address this situation personally, That's, eventually bro. revealing on Snapchat that he was shot, indeed stabbed fucking, near his right then, eye and in his hand in an unfair three-on-one fight with him suggesting that those responsible had gone on to say that Iscot had stabbed them first in court. <laughs> We're now closing in on the conclusion of this story, but not before getting to one of the craziest things to happen as part of this feud. As we get into 2020, the how are 800,000 markers? Don't tell me they, like he's literally mean they went to Dubai with it. It lets you see how people interact with your site. The back and forth between OFB and the Greens of N9 and 3x3 is as active as ever. And in November of 2020, rappers from both OFB and the Nine are spotted on social media calling out in Dubai. And while they're out there, Turner and Tion are seen Dubai. posted up at a club saying that the ops know where to find them. Niggas talk about be safe, yeah? Listen, you fucking turn it up Man, out so here. Be safe um, the Listen, the real deal, YouTube gangster internet killer you see me big turns yeah i only got one thing to say yeah hold on hold on hold on hold on, hold on. look at the green look at the yellow hey right, one thing to say yeah niggas know where, where we was gonna be for two days and niggas not pull up they all smoke about it. be safe bro you niggas be safe this led to band okay responding on social media saying that the niners aren't really with it all right guys need to stop the bad boy chat man especially you know they're not with it man stop it Dickheads, bro. And throughout their stay in Dubai, the Niners and the O would go back and forth, back and forth. Tion posted that they all look up to him. Bando replied saying him and Hedy won it outside in Dubai. Hedy piped up saying social media is killing his people. And at a certain point, the disrespect got turned up to a whole other level when the OFB guys started mocking Turner from the Nine for a recording of him apparently crying over a girl. No comment on that one, Turner. But Turner <laughs> clapped back saying that it's these guys always initiating beef with him and that he just responds. But this international social media spat eventually came to a head in a violent and the most inappropriate fashion because who would have thought that these two warring crews from North London gang sets would find themselves together on the same flight home from their Dubai holiday. What? And around this time, amateur video begun to surface depicting what? Tion Wayne and Hedy One in a physical confrontation on board a flight set to fly out of Dubai where apparently a drink was thrown followed by Tion Wayne taking what looked like a full swing punch at Hedy One but thankfully missed slash was absorbed by everybody's favourite grow house robber Morrison. Look him up in your own time. Anywho, whilst Tion is swinging on Hedy, Turner is having a scrap with Desi on the other side of the plane, with Desi seemingly armed with a plastic shank that you would use to chef up an in-flight meal. Now, the short clips that circulated from this incident didn't really tell the entire story, but they sure did set the internet on fire with a raft of hilarious memes that followed. Once again, the clips of the fight on the plane are a little too spicy to show you on YouTube, but eventually, Hedy One would come through commenting on the situation on Twitter, saying, little altercation with some gangsters coming out for a fight with their phones out, clearly some clout chasing, I'm good, I'm free, a hair on my head hasn't been touched. I'm having dinner steady. To which Tion Wayne clapped back on Twitter himself saying, lol, oh, you an internet boy now. Disappointing. Before the phones came out, I bust your boy's face. You lot were running back to the kitchen. Man didn't even back out no phone. Man replied to his boy bleeding by dashing Fanta, which is a soft drink in the UK. Yeah. And here he is well, tweeting. These guys always too, fool in the public, no real heart. Man called me a clout chaser. I've been airing these guys. They've been saying my name in their songs every second. Even the ones I don't know. I'm out. Desi from OFB replied to this saying, that was some dead wok house scrap. He means prison house. You weren't even on it. And your friend that's 28 years old was waving his camera, screaming around like some gal. With Desi going on to say, you yourself when Hedy told you, look at your friend waving the camera when we're supposed to get it cracking. 
You looked back and didn't say a thing. I saw in your eyes the disappointment. Don't come here and cap for the net. Anywho, after the fight, some of the OFB boys, including Frogger and Heady One, were seen still in Dubai, I assume after having been removed from the plane, and as some rumours said, having been arrested and put in jail for a brief period. Bruv, don't listen to don't everything listen you to hear. Bro. My man's coming there now. <laughs> Bruv, oh, who oh, took the violation, bro? What is man talking about? <laughs> man are talking shit, bro. Bruv, I'm kind of lucky that we weren't all there, innit? What, man see a two, man. Turner's there screaming, showing his, just trying to snap video, like, like, to, like, like Desi did a fly kick him. Brother, come on, bro, you're getting fly kicked by a 19-year-old or a big 26, 27-year-old man. Like, what's the man talking about, bruv? Everyone's just chatting bare shit. And then what, I'm seeing all you people trying to post up, you lot are Yeah, I know you should. Turner, you was just a video, man. And everyone's getting excited. Man, they're trying to say, the man, are trying to say, Heady, the Desi head bus, this, that. Just, bruv, where's their bus head? Where's the bus head? <laughs> Come on, man, man, just check their shit, fam. However, in spite of claims that they'd been to jail, Frogger made a post seemingly suggesting that they had gotten out, with Band OK later posting snaps of him leaving the country, confirming that he had been to jail and that he would have stayed in Dubai if they hadn't locked him up, so fuck this place for a while. Going on to suggest that he was actually due to be there next week, but he's probably never coming back, possibly related to an outstanding legal issue because of this fight. Right, with Bando so out here looking like he was kind of doing the race right, like some what? sort of Arabic TK. Tian Wayne also posted saying no one's been arrested and Turner managed to flip the situation into a W very quickly, slapping together a song and a video about the situation called Flight Mode. Fortunately, no one was hurt in this exchange, but it was yet another reason for these two constantly warring sides to continue beefing and having public issues with each other. And that would continue on in music as we get to 2021, which is of course the year that Tion Wayne takes over the entire rap game. <laughs> keep elevating, you know what I'm saying? So he's saying just enough out of it to keep on elevating. 2021, you know the many complex and now intertwined Tion beefs Wayne of North up, London right, gang warfare are still shit, raging. Uh, Following the split after the fight between... A bunch of superstars over here so on this if side, I tell you, me. hey, there's a side training on how you can get pro art skills in 2024, register for free now, get a coupon on... Ev SJ and the MPK members in court, MPK pull up on the Broadwater farm blocks, filming music videos at iconic beef locations in an attempt to disrespect their former friends. Putting purple MPK bandanas on the sign, something that 3x3 had apparently done before. As well as going as far to go and film in front of that Nando's in Wood Green, where witnesses filmed SJ and MPK members running away from the K1 murders holding knives. They also went to the spot where Lamps got shot and Edmonton Green Station. This ended up being the music video for their track Exposing Ops 2.0, which was quickly taken down from YouTube for inside violence. And this is kind of no surprise, seeing as Looking the lyrics of the bag. song had sneaks Looking claiming he gave SJ bag. a black eye in that courtroom fight. They say that they're FBK or farm block killers, and even seeming to claim responsibility for the Ispol eye stabbing incident. But while the ops are going low, at least Hedy 1 is going high. On the 12th of February 2021, Hedy finally releases his debut studio album Edna, which goes number one in the UK album charts. This must have been a huge point of pride for Hedy, especially considering the fact that the album was named after his deceased mother Edna, who sadly didn't get to enjoy her her son's success. To me, this really is the moment that Hedy One proved to himself and the entire world that he is far more than just a drill rapper. He is a true artist who evolved, moved forward, and clearly has what it takes to survive in the modern music industry. But sadly, whilst his youngers, Band OK and Double L's were still pushing forward with the music, by 2021, holding a whopping five chart entries, including their protest song BLM with Abracadabra, but sadly, they were still being targeted in the street. On the 8th of May, 2021, a massive brawl and stabbing goes down inside of one of London's most famous and historical department stores Selfridges. It's unclear exactly what went down. A knife is pulled, a mannequin is thrown, and Band OK and Ispot are seen in the altercation which was caught on camera. Again, too violent to show you on YouTube. Eight yeah. people are arrested, including Band OK, who fortunately gets out quickly and posts up on Snapchat. Funnily enough, their ops over in the nine are having a very different time of things in 2021. Because in March, Tion Wayne drops another collaboration with Russ, the song Body, that is an instant classic. Wait, Tion Wayne's Body ends up going to number one in the UK singles charts, becoming the very first drill song in history to go number one in this country. That's Damn. the kind of body I like to see drill rappers catching. Damn, of course, the Daily sure. Mail were trashing them, saying a gangland drill song has gone number one, oh how bad that is. But hell, if they thought Tion Wayne having a number one song about doing grievous bodily harm to your ops and swinging a shank at the Pagans was bad, wait until they hear the remix. Because a little while after Body <laughs> dropped, in a last minute dash to pick up more spins to secure that number one spot, Tion Wayne dropped an all-star remix to the song Body. Wait, now this remix was mainly overshadowed by the big time debut of RD, aka H with elocution lessons, dropping bars about shagging girls sans condoms. Another highlight of this remix was Fabio Foreign's appearance, popping up like he's on some kind of New York UK. 
UK drill exchange program and embarrassing our whole country by using his 8-bar verse on the biggest song in UK drill history to reference a fictional UK driller, Roadman Shack. You know, man's not hot. Nice one, Favvy. But of course, the real grease came from the real G's, with Tion bringing through the three times three rappers E1 and ZT, who appeared on the remix giving a healthy dose of street credentials and disrespect to the ops. Using the track to rebuff OFB's frequently used claim, any team green get bun, saying it's a cap because no one from three times three has been shot. Surely you'd think that after bagging a number one hit song, Tion Wayne had truly gone clear. He wouldn't ever need to gang bang or throw up a green you flag ever again, right? Well, a little while after Body topped the charts, Tion Wayne was actually spotted out with a tank. Some people thought Tion Wayne had used some sort of GTA cheat code, spawning a tank and perhaps unlimited ammo, to finally put an end to this beef once and for all. And it was a smart time to do it, because Tion had made sure that he had already 100%ed the music industry before using cheats. Jokes aside though, it turned out that this big old green tank was actually just a prop for the music video of Tion Wayne's new single, Wow. With this releasing on the 3rd of June, the music video was looking like a straight up Grove Street block party. With Tion bringing through the whole nine and a whole lot of green, I assume as another green. massive taunt to his rivals. Combine that with lyrics about ops struggling on the O and not being able to defend their block, Young G shooting up north, and even ending the song by saying the whole nine's confused when he says free SJ, an apparent reference to the fact that both OFB and 3 Times 3 both have incarcerated rappers that go by the name SJ. So, this is where the story ends. What? I'm here at the Hollywood Bowl in Wood Green, the location where Lamps was murdered. He was only 19 when he was killed, and he had his whole life ahead of him, only a couple of years younger than the likes of K1 and Kobe. Take that along with the fact that Boogie B and SJ from OFB were sentenced to decades in prison before they had even turned 18. Just going to show you that the road life is truly a dead end. Thankfully, the likes of Tion Wayne and Hedy One were able to get out of this difficult environment with number one records to their names and millions of pounds in the bank. I just wish that the people involved in this feud could set things aside and let each other live. But then again, when there's been this much bloodshed, it's hard to imagine that everyone involved will just let things go. I know a lot of people look up to the drill rappers that we've discussed in this story, but the reality behind those lyrics isn't fun or exciting. It's actually very sad, heartbreaking, and filled with loss. So if there's one takeaway I want to give you from this video is that you shouldn't convince yourself that you're a fan of the streets or the drills or the gangs, but really, just be a fan of the music and let people get on with their lives. Bro. That shit's amazing, bro. Like I said, we're not, we not glorifying none of this shit. The shit is just like really like a movie, you know what I'm saying? Like, the way this shit politics out and how you have two motherfucking... Gangs is like in coalition, then they fucking break up. Then you got friends turning on each other, bro. This shit's a real life movie, bro. You know what I'm saying? And it's like I don't hear nothing about nobody's fucking fathers or dads. You know what I'm saying? I always hear about the moms. You know what I'm saying? Like, how are they getting into these gangs so young? Like, they don't have shit else to fucking do. You know what I'm saying? Like, what is going on, bro? Like, this shit is crazy. But either way, they get into the bag, young, whatever, but then they turn around and fuck it up. You know what I'm saying? You got a couple that make it out, like uh, Hetty One and Tion Wayne, which I've, I, of course I've heard of him on, on a, a numerous of tracks over this way, you feel me? Um, but the niggas are still beefing, like they're still in the streets. At some point, you got to level up, you know what I'm saying? It's not, that's just not cool when you're 26, 27, 28 years old. Still beefing with fucking 18, 19, and 20 year olds. You know what I'm saying? Especially when you were on this level. Why? Make it make sense to me, bro. I, it, it makes absolutely no sense. You, see, you know what I'm saying? So, I, I love the fact that I just sit here, sat here and watched a whole fucking hour. You know what I'm saying? Hour and something goddamn movie. Because that's basically what the fuck it was. You know what I'm saying? This shit is still going on today. You feel me? Like, like you said, it's just... Motherfuckers just ain't gonna let it go. At the end of the day, like I told you, there ain't no fucking plan B. The ops is the ops is the ops. You know what I'm saying? It ain't no shaking hands. It ain't no getting over it. Them, them, them red, the goddamn purple, the green, you feel me? It is what it is. And it's always gonna be fucking separated. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to 21 Gun, bro. Like, this shit was amazing. And I can't wait to keep going further in. And obviously bringing you some, uh, some or somebody dropped me a, um, a reaction to do on Chirac, you feel me? So we're going to drop that motherfucker too. Maybe tomorrow or some shit like that. I got to see how long that video is. But I'm hoping to, like, I want to keep it consistent. I'm trying to drop every fucking day is what I'm trying to do. So let me, let me know if you guys like the fucking, the 20, the 30 minute videos 
or the hour long plus videos. Let me know. Drop that in the comment section. Stay active with me because you guys are keeping me up on game and you guys are keeping me real active and keeping me accountable for dropping these videos, man, and having fun with the shit. You know what I'm saying? Because that's exactly what I'm doing. Like, I miss this shit so fucking much. This this is this is where I'm in my space. This is this is my zone. You know what I'm saying? My happy place. You know what I'm saying? So, man, uh, I'm going to get out of here, man. I'm going to go ahead and shit. You know what I'm saying? It's time to knock out a video for the other fucking channel. Like I said, if you want to follow that one, um, it's my world. You know what I'm saying? How I make my money, how I get out. The clothes, the car, the shoes, my family and shit like that. Head over to World of Foosh. Here's my social medias as far as like Instagram, Snapchat, um, TikTok and shit like that. Man, follow your boy. I'm trying to I'm trying to run my Instagram up to 5K, then eventually 10, you know what I'm saying? But we on that fucking 12K subscriber grind if you don't know. So make sure you tap in. Make sure you subscribe to the channel like right now. Tell a friend, tell a friend. Tell them Foosh is back, man. We getting down just like that. Ooh, bars. You feel me? <laughs> this is boy Foosh, man. I'm out this motherfucker, man. I'm trying to do another reaction. I'll catch you motherfuckers. Tomorrow. Gone.